Okay, the Ebola virus, not new, it was first identified back in 1976. To date, the recent outbreak has killed nearly 5,000 people in Africa, and that number is expected to grow. Well, some infectious disease experts fear that the number of infected people in West Africa alone could reach 1.4 million by January. So now a look at how we got to this point. It began March 22nd. The first confirmation of Ebola in this outbreak was in the West African country of Guinea. The disease soon spreading to neighboring countries. Ebola suspected in Liberia and Sierra Leone eight days later on March 30th. It's a cluster right now we're seeing in West Africa and in various countries where for some unknown reason uh, the conditions have been favorable to the spread. Then August 2nd, the first time an American infected with the virus was brought to the United States. Dr. Kent Brantley, a U.S. missionary doctor infected while in Liberia, was flown to Atlanta for treatment. We have an inordinate amount of safety associated with the care of this patient, and we do not believe that any health care worker, any other patient, or any visitor to our facility is in any way at risk of acquiring this infection. August 5th, another missionary, Nancy Wrightbull, also arrived in Atlanta for treatment. Both Brantley and Wrightbull were later released and cured. Fast forward to August 8th, the World Health Organization declared Ebola an international public health emergency. Then the disease really hit closer to home. On September 30th, the CDC diagnosed the first case in the United States. Liberian Thomas Eric Duncan went to a Dallas hospital with a fever and abdominal pain. On October 8th, Duncan was dead. Reacting to that news, on October 11th, Kennedy Airport became the first U.S. airport to screen travelers from three West African countries for Ebola symptoms. But then, back in Dallas, on October 12th, Nina Pham, a nurse who treated Duncan, was diagnosed. Pham became the first person to contract the virus in the United States. Unfortunately, it is possible in the coming days that we will see additional cases of Ebola. Three days later, on October 15th, it was revealed that Amber Vinson, a second nurse from that Texas hospital, tested positive. If we do not set up the kind of preparedness uh, and training uh, in our public health infrastructure here in the United States, uh, not just for this outbreak, but for future outbreaks, then we could have problems. By October 17th, President Obama named an Ebola czar Ron Klain. Then on October 23rd, confirmation of the first Ebola case in New York City. Dr. Craig Spencer tested positive at Bellevue Hospital after a recent medical mission in Guinea. Joel Waldman, Fox 5 News.